Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's LSVT Global Webinar called Preparing Tomorrow's Therapist Today, LSVT Training and Certification Options for University Programs. We're excited to bring you this brand new webinar on this new topic. I myself am Laura Gousset. I'm the Chief Clinical Officer of LSVT Big and one of the LSVT Big Training and Certification, certification Faculty. I am joined by Angela Halpern, my colleague who is the Chief Clinical Officer of LSVT Loud and one of the LSVT Loud Training and Certification Faculty as well. Today, uh, in addition to hearing from us, we are also really delighted to have on, uh, on deck three additional panelists who are faculty at speech, PT, and OT programs around the United States. Um, and these three faculty have graciously um, joined us today to share their insights on offering LSVT Loud and LSVT Big programs to their students. In addition, we are joined by a former student who partook in one of the LSVT Big trainings at her university. So uh, I think today will be a really exciting webinar and hopefully provide you with some valuable information that uh, you might use in considering bringing the university programs um, to your university. So briefly on this next slide um, are Angela's bio and my bio as well. I'm a physical therapist and have spent the majority of my career focusing on treatment of individuals with Parkinson's disease and other neurological disorders. Um, I am now the Chief Clinical Officer of LSVT Big and one of the faculty that teaches LSVT Big throughout the world, both live and online. Angela is a speech language pathologist and the Chief Clinical Officer of LSVT Loud. She has extensive experience treating patients with Parkinson's and other neural disorders using LSVT Loud. So we're delighted to have Angela with us today as well. The plan for the webinar is this. We do have some content that we will be presenting today. There are a couple of handouts that you can find in your control panel, panel under the handouts tab. So be sure to uh, download those, save those to your computer so that you can refer to them later. Um, at the end of the webinar, we will have some question and answer time. So if you have questions, you can simply type them into your question box now um, at any time and we'll kind of stockpile those and go through those at the end of the webinar. Also, there will be some um, opportunity to ask your questions out loud to the audience and to our panelists today. Um, you can do that by raising your hand. Again, we'll probably save those um, raised hands towards the end of the webinar, but feel free to raise your hand at any time. Um, and the last way is if you think of any questions later, you can always email us at info at lsvtglobal.com and we'd be happy to answer your questions after the webinar as well. If you are a therapist joining us for today's webinar, um, please do note that our, web our webinars are not registered for ASHA CEUs or state registered, C registered CEUs, but you can use them for self-report credit if your state allows that. We will provide you with an electronic certificate one to two weeks after the date of this live webinar. Um, the webinar is one hour in duration and you must attend for the full hour to earn your certificate. If you're a person that is listening to this webinar on demand later, you can also um, earn a certificate that you can use for self-report by emailing us at webinars at lsvtglobal.com. A few quick disclosures. Um, all of our faculty have both financial and non-financial relationships with LSVT Global, including a treatment preference for the LSVT Big and LSVT Loud treatment techniques. And both Angela and myself are employees of LSVT Global and receive consulting fees and travel reimbursement. So these are our main learning objectives today that we'll go through, and then I'm going to turn the mic over to Angela to kick it off. Um, upon conclusion of the webinar, we hope that you'll be able to recognize the need to train more therapists um, to treat people with Parkinson's disease and understand why. Secondly, we want you to be able to understand the benefits of providing LSVT Big training and certification to students. And then lastly, uh, describe the models for our live and online learning uh, for student training and certification at universities. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Angela after this quick polling question. 
So the polling question that I'm going to pull up in a minute is, are you a speech therapist, a physical therapist, or an occupational therapist? Um, and if you just give me one minute here, I'm going to pull that, pull that question up. And you should see the polling question on your screen. So I'll give you a minute to go ahead and answer that. Looks like almost everyone has voted. Okay, and so from this, you can see that 47% are faculty in a PT, OT, or speech program. 34% are professional PTs, OTs, or speech therapists, and 18% are students. So that's really helpful for us to know who is joining us today, and it looks like a nice mix, and thank you to all of the faculty that have taken time out of your busy schedules as well to, to join us today. So let me just bring you back to the webinar. And actually, I just realized I have a few more slides before I'm gonna kick it over to Angela. So one of the things that we want to just share with you is some new information in an article that was recently published by Bass Bloom and colleagues. And the title of the article, article was a Parkinson's pandemic, a call to action. In this article, it stated that currently we have nearly 7 million people worldwide with Parkinson's disease and that incidents is expected to double to 14.2 million people by 2040. And the question for all of us as therapists, um, because therapy is the one of the primary treatments for this disease, is are we ready? And so that brings us to our mission as a company, is to really empower people with Parkinson's to restore and maintain their highest levels of functional communication, mobility, and independence with ADLs through our scientifically supported rehabilitative treatment programs, LSVT Loud, which is the speech treatment, and LSVT Big, which is the physical and occupational therapy treatment. For those of you who are not familiar with these treatment protocols, um, very briefly, they're both intensive amplitude-focused therapy approaches based on principles of neuroplasticity and motor learning. What's unique about them is that they're not only an exercise program that trains amplitude, but they also incorporate a sensory component um, so that the patient can independently target normal movement and amplitude and normal speech loudness and be able to carry that over long term. We do have a standardized dosage that's evidence-based. So the dosage is quite intensive over one month. It's 16 sessions, four days a week for four weeks. They're individual one-hour sessions, and the patient has daily homework and daily carryover exercises as well. So all those, the, although these are standardized treatment protocols, they're very much individualized and customized to the unique goals of every patient. Um, so they can be adapted or progressed in order to meet each patient's needs, regardless of their um, stage of disease, their disease severity, and presenting impairments or underlying comorbidities as well. So the LSVT programs have de been developed over the last 25 years and have been supported by a tremendous amount of funding from the National Institutes of Health and other organizations. LSVT Loud in particular is the first speech treatment with level one evidence and established efficacy for treating voice and speech disorders in people with Parkinson's disease, uh, but with application to other neural disorders as well. The evidence for LSVT Loud includes three randomized controlled trials and numerous other studies on Parkinson's disease and other disorders. LSVT Big was derived from the LSVT protocol. It's a physical and occupational therapy treatment with those same treatment principles, and it also has a growing body of research, including one randomized controlled trial and other um, studies as well. If you'd like to um, view our reference list, download or print it, or see other articles that are open access, we've listed our 
um, new blog link to the research specifically. In terms of the background on the LSVT BIG and LSVT Loud training and certification courses, um, the LSVT Loud treatment was developed first and thus the translation to um, a training protocol for speech therapists was developed earlier than LSVT BIG. The first live training was in 1993 and the first online training was in 2010. LSVT Big, um, the research began in the early 2000s with our first live training workshop occurring in 2007, and then the transition to online training being available in 2014. And today we offer both live and online versions of this same course um, in both LSVT Loud and LSVT Big. Today we have over 20,000 LSVT Big uh, excuse me, LSVT Loud certified clinicians in 72 countries and over 17,500 LSVT Big certified clinicians in 45 countries. And so it really is um, a global treatment intervention that we continue to look to expand because of the growing incidence of Parkinson's throughout the world. And so with that, now I am officially going to turn it over to Angela. Great. Thanks so much, Laura. Well, let's dig into these types of university training models. So first of all, why offer training to students? We really feel that it's important for students to have this opportunity to learn the LSVT concepts during this formative time of their training. And so what we see is that LSVT training can not only help to reinforce those concepts of motor learning and neuroplasticity, that students are learning about in their coursework, but it can also show them how to apply those concepts through evidence-based protocols. It can provide the students with opportunities to gain practical, hands-on experience while being under the supervision of certified therapists so they can learn and receive feedback, and it enables them to participate in research studies if that's a focus for them. We always welcome ideas for new research studies. So for any faculty, students, clinicians out there, if you ever have any studies in mind, please contact us and we'd love to discuss that with you. But this training at that formative time can help to build that foundation to perhaps spark ideas for studies. And students really tell us how they feel it gives them a leg up if they can have LSVT loud or LSVT big certification on their resume as they go to apply for jobs. Next slide, please. So when we think about training, we have a couple of models. First is our traditional LSVT training model. And this is our live two-day course. So while the focus of this webinar is going to be more on the online option, um, we did just want to bring up this live option as well. Some universities have hosted live courses, and those courses have been open to faculty, students, and therapists in the community to come in for the live training. So this can be a really nice way for a university to make connections to therapists in the community who might serve as externship supervisors for students and for students to meet those therapists in the community as well. So the live course is a two-day course. It takes about 12 and a half hours, including an exam. It's PowerPoint with videos, and then we have people with Parkinson's disease come in on day two to do a hands-on interactive demonstration. And if you go to our website, you can see all the courses that we currently have available worldwide. Next slide, please. If you are interested in hosting a live course sometime in the future, we're always looking for big spaces in big cities. So um, this just gives you some of the square footage requirements for the spaces that we look at for LSVT Loud and LSVT Big. And if you do wanna host a live course, you provide the space, the audio visual, some light food and beverage, assist us with marketing, and then we do all the rest. And then in return, you can earn some complimentary registrations for um, that can be used for faculty, clinicians, students. Next slide, please. So we want to think about some innovative ways to make training available to more individuals. 
So let's think about this in terms of the online course. As I mentioned a few slides ago, the live course is 12 and a half hours um, with the exam. The online course is also approximately 12 and a half hours because the core content of the live and the online course is the same. With this in the online course, it's pre-recorded. There are up to 100 video and audio clips which replace those live demos that we mentioned happened in the live course. And it's a self-paced course. So people have 90 days to complete it and they can either power through and do it in two days or they can take the full 90 days. All the materials can be downloaded and there's a physical binder that comes with it as well. And then we'll talk about some models for how you can incorporate practicing with other people, with people with Parkinson's through this online course. And then you'll see a listing of some of those technical requirements there as well. Next slide. We feel it's essentially important to provide support to our certified therapist beyond the course itself. And so we really view our relationship with our clinicians as lifelong. So in addition to the LSVT Loud or LSVT Big live or online courses, course participants also receive all of these things listed here. So we have downloadable resources for assessment, treatment, clinical practice, live and on-demand de webinars such as this one. Um, we're very excited about being able to offer that continued education for our therapists. People can have access to a clinician forum to ask questions at any time, direct access to the faculty at any time. Also, we provide a homework helper DVD that can be loaned out to patients. I meant to mention the printed course binder before. Um, for the online course, it's the self-paced learning over 90 days. And also we have some exclusive access to some advanced courses that once clinicians are certified, they can then learn more on advanced and certain topics, as well as with the LSVT companion that can be used to assist with LSVT loud treatment. And then one thing clinicians love is the listing on our clinician directory, which neurologists and people with Parkinson's contact us about looking for clinicians in their area. If you're a student getting trained and certified, then once you um, graduate, you contact us and say, hey, I'm graduated now. And then at that point, we'll list you on the clinician directory for referrals. And then we have a lot of resources and marketing tools. Also, upon graduation, that's when um, students will be changed from a student status of the certification to a professional status. Next slide, please. So we're excited to have several panelists with us today, as Laura introduced at the beginning. Um, we feel it's really important for you to hear directly from faculty and students who have participated in the online course. So let's, we're going to start with our first panelist. And uh, Sonia took the online LSVT Big training and certification course as an occupational therapy student. And Sonia, thank you for joining us today. Happy to be here. We really appreciate your time. I just have a couple questions for you. So the first one is, how did the LSVT big training impact you both as a student and then as you went on to become a professional? Sure. Um, uh, you know, I felt like so much of graduate school felt really theoretical. You know, we learned about different diagnoses and how to develop clinical approaches and clinical reasoning, but there wasn't a ton of practical, like, this is exactly what you do with patients in a treatment session. Um, so I think that taking the LSVT course really gave me that opportunity to get out of the theoretical and get a real practical path to treating people with Parkinson's disease. Um, and I felt like immediately I was able to use it. I um, I took the course, I think the semester before I started field work or my, my second level field work. Um, and I was able to use LSVT in an inpatient rehab setting with one of my patients. Um, and then I actually ended up presenting on LSVT for my in-service during field work, which was really impressive to um, the director of rehab and my supervisor. 
Um, so that was really great. Um, and then when I graduated, um, and as, as you mentioned, I got changed from that student status to, um, to the status of really being an LSVT uh, therapist. Um, my first patient, I was contacted, um, and my first patient was a person seeking LSVT at home in, a, in sort of a private pay uh, way. So that was the first, my first OT job essentially was this private client, which was really wonderful. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah. So I didn't, I haven't actually had private, I was like so psyched to now. I was like, I'm going to open an LSVT private practice. <laughs> it was a little impractical <laughs> for the first, the first thing to do it, um, as an occupational therapist. But since then, um, I applied for a home health job. Um, I think that the LSVT certification really helped um, it helped me to stand out. I was hired um, with that company and I've been working ever since and I, I'm able to use LSVT with my patients now who have Parkinson's disease. Excellent, excellent. See, you kind of already touched on this, but if you can just el elaborate a little bit more and what you feel like was the advantage for you to be able to take that training as a student rather than waiting until after you had graduated? Well, I can just say that, you know, when you're a student, that's when you really have the time and have the energy to um, be learning. I, I want to be doing continuing education right now, but it's very difficult um, to manage when you're sort of working full time and um, a lot of the learning that you're doing is on your own because you get this client who has this d disease or that diagnosis and you're trying to figure out, okay, how do I, how do I help this person? I'm going to, you know, look up articles and that, but you're not able to actually spend the time very often, at least I think in the first few years of practice to take time away um, to do a course like this. Um, and, and as I said, like it, you're, you're a student, you're really thinking so theoretically and you're, and it's a little bit scary to think about going out into the real world and treating patients. So to have something that's so um, prescriptive, that's so like, this is what you do with them. And obviously there's some shape, you know, some room to, um, to make it really individual to each patient, but there's, there's a real structure that, um, that creates a feeling of, oh, okay, well, at least I know what to do with with this population, you know? Mm -hmm. Great, great. Well, thank you so much for joining us. You had some really nice pearls and insight there. And um, yeah, that's exciting that you were able to take that and dig right in to your implementation with your first patient. Yeah, thank you. Wonderful, thanks. And I have to run to a patient now, actually, so I'm gonna say goodbye, but um, I'm so happy that I could have been part of this. Great, well, thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, we can go on to the next slide. So on here on this slide, I touched on this comparison a bit earlier, so I'm not gonna go point by point, but we just wanted to provide you with a comparison of live and online learning for your reference. We really recognize that there's all types of learners out there. Some people prefer the flexibility of online learning, being able to move at their own pace, being able to focus, go back, review concepts. And other people tell us they prefer live learning. They need that interaction to enhance their learning. So we're really excited that we have both these methods available, each of which can provide the same quality, same content, so people can select which method works best for them. But this just shows you how they are the same in content um, and the same core and just a few of the differences between the two of the online versus the live. So next slide, please. And for pricing, this is really for your reference. Um, just gonna touch on a couple of things here. We are so excited to have students get trained. We feel like it's very important for the reasons that we mentioned earlier. But we also recognize that financial burden that students are under being in school. And so we like to um, be able to make this feasible for students by offering the student discount that you see listed here. And then, as I mentioned and touched on, and as Sonia mentioned, basically what happens when people graduate is they just contact us at that time, and then we can move them from student to professional status and um, list them on the website to receive referrals at that time if they so choose. 
And for any of our live or online, we do offer group discounts um, for five or more registrants listed here. And then if you're interested in organizing online training for students, uh, which we're going to get into some of those models next, this just lists some of the pricing that we offer discounts for faculty with some of those different models. Next slide, please. So speaking of the different models for online training, in order to meet those varying needs that universities and student groups have across the country, we've developed three different models for faculty for implementation. And we're gonna talk about each of these in more detail. So we have an individual learning model, a group, total group learning model, and a model where students do part of it individually and part of it in a group. Next slide, please. With the first option, it's individual learning. And then at the end of this, there may or may not be a lab with question answer and an opportunity to actually practice with people with Parkinson's disease. So with this option, students complete the training course on their own. And then a faculty group facilitator who's LSVT certified may choose then to offer an optional lab at the end of that period of time for the patients to either, or I'm sorry, for the students to practice the exercises together and then perhaps maybe even bring in some people with Parkinson's disease, um, also to do some Q&A. And what we're happy to offer during this time is if you want to organize the students into a group, one of our faculty can come on via webcam and answer any questions the students might have. So next slide, please. We're going to actually move on to our next faculty interview now with this type of a model. And it's my pleasure to introduce you to Jen Lowen. Jen is a clinical assistant professor at the University of Colorado Boulder, and she successfully implemented this individual learning model followed by a group question answer and hands-on practice with a person with Parkinson's disease. So Jen, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your pearls of wisdom today. Thanks, Angela. Hello, everyone. Great. So I'm just going to go through a few questions with you here. Um, just to start off with, why did you feel like it was important to organize online LSVT loud training for your students? Uh, well, we have offered the live training in the past and felt like it was such an important skill for our students and, and clinicians to have. Uh, because we have had the live training in the past, we have, a, you know, a lot of, we've got a healthy relationship with the community of support professionals for people with Parkinson's in our community. And so we have clinical experiences and we wanted students to be able to have the certification uh, to be able to, to work in that practice. Um, additionally, you know, as a program, we're really working toward being able to, you know, really teach and support evidence-based practice for clinicians. And so the level of evidence with LSVT really gives us a, um, you know, we're really walking the walk uh, by helping them become LSVT certified and get LSVT experience. Great, great. So I introduced the model that you used. Um, so you had the students complete the course individually and then organized a group question answer with a demonstration at the end. Mm -hmm. what, what did you really like about that particular model? Yeah, so when we offered the online training, um, as I, I know that many of the participants in today's webinar our, our university faculty, and we recognize that students have a lot of demands uh, during their clinical training with coursework um, and clinic and, you know, maybe research and comprehensive exams. And so the online training allowed students a little more flexibility uh, in completing the training. So we offered it over a time period that spanned, you know, some different times that students might have to complete the training. Um, in addition, it was offered sort of concurrently with some of the coursework that they would be taking that would support, um, you know, really further their knowledge uh, for these populations. And so having the online training, I think, really augmented the campus-based courses, uh, gave them the flexibility um, to complete at their convenience, and then, 
having the um, the lab or the practical training session at the end, I think really, um, you know, help them apply the information that they had gotten from the online training. Great, great. And Sonia mentioned that she was able to use it in her um, first externship mm -hmm. with her first patients. Have you had your students be able to use LSVT Loud in clinical work, externships, yes. things like that? I was I was pleased to hear her say that because I get the same reports from students. Uh, for the students who are um, interested in working with these populations, they are able to apply uh, LSBT Loud in, you know, you know, in their clinical training and then in internships, externships, as well as in their jobs. I, I saw one of my former students uh, last weekend at a fees training, and I said. I can't remember who was the LSVT client that we worked with in the clinic. And she said, honestly, I've now worked with so many because it's so much of what I do in my position that it's Absolutely. hard for me to even remember. So, so it was a great marketable skill that she's been able to really practice and apply. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's, yeah. Well, so you're kind of touching on this, but if you had anything else to add about how you feel the training benefited the students who have taken it. So either just in setting them up for coursework or if you had other stories about, um, you know, getting jobs, that sort of thing. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the marketability is very important. Um, the, you know, what students really appreciate the benefits-based approach of, or, or I'm sorry, the methods-based approach of LSVT. So, um, for all, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that most of the people who are attending today are LSVT certified as clinician, as a clinician for me personally, it was so nice to um, learn this approach that was so clear in the process of how to do it and what evidence supports it and how to apply the information. And I think students really appreciate that at, at this stage of their career and training. Um, I also really feel like uh, we, we offer the training very early uh, in, our, in our program. So students in their first semester uh, take the voice disorders, um, you know, campus-based course, but then also have the opportunity to do the LSVT online training. And as a supervisor, that's so wonderful because they then get this methods approach that they can apply. And I really feel like you can apply some of the concepts and fundamentals of LSVT in your clinical practice to, with all kinds of different populations and disorders. Great, great. So you um, feel like having them do it earlier as a first year can really help to set them up and help them with their later coursework. Yeah, yeah, I do. And, you know, our clinicians start, um, you know, working in the clinic, um, you know, in a limited way in their first semester of their graduate program. So, you know, by the next semester, they're really working, you know, in as a clinical practitioner. So having this training uh, that they can not only apply to, you know, a, you know, working, doing LSVT loud with, you know, appropriate clients, but also just thinking about some of the fundamental fundamentals with their other clients about establishing a behavior, practicing a behavior through a hierarchy, um, thinking about off-cuff behaviors and how to support clients with those, thinking about, you know, tuning into generalization uh, and how to get student or clients to generalize skills outside of the treatment environment. I think that those concepts are so important for clinicians to think about with all kinds of clients that they're working with. Wonderful, thank you for all those pearls. Yeah, um, thanks Angela. Uh, we really appreciate your input and your time yeah. and thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, I will just say kudos to LSBT. What you said about uh, LSBT really supporting clinicians, uh, you know, as a, a sort of a, a lifelong partnership, I think LSBT is doing a great job with that. Well, thank you. Appreciate that yeah. feedback. Yeah. Thanks, Angela. Thank you. So, Laura, I'm going to turn it back over to you now to continue on. Okay. Well, thank you, Angela. And thank you, Jen. That was really um, a, a great 
interview. Thank you for all of the insightful questions that you answered and for joining us today. So you talked about the individual learning model where the students would learn on their own time. And now we're gonna move on to the second option, which is the group learning models. So in the second option, uh, the students and the faculty would complete the course together all at the same time in a classroom environment. And because of this, the faculty that is leading or facilitating the course doesn't need to be previously certified. You can learn right along with the students at the same time because of the way that the coursework is laid out and designed. Um, if you are already previously certified, that's great, and you can take the course along with the students still um, at no additional charge and get the CEUs for yourself. So it is two full days, eight hours minimum. Um, the, the course time runs about 12 and a half hours. However, there is additional time required for practicing um, exercises, taking the exam, uh, discussion, and so on. So you can break that down in whatever way you want to. You can do it in two full days, or you can do multiple um, days in smaller segments. It's really whatever fits into your schedule and the student's schedule. Um, during this, the faculty and the student um, do log in together. And the process is when it becomes time for that group learning day, the students bring their laptops to the classroom and go through the modules together. So it is individual learning still, but together as a group, if that makes sense. Usually the faculty facilitator is the one that projects the course onto the large screen. Occasionally that's been a student leader and that can work as well. Um, but the audio and the video is going through the main um, computer at the front of the room and everyone else puts their computers on mute and clicks through the slides simultaneously that are built into the online learning course. Then when there's modules that include exercise practice, everyone um, can move to the lab and practice the exercises together on each other. Or in some instances, especially for LSVT Allow, they might not need to move to a separate room but may be able to stay right there and practice on each other just like they would in a live course. So here's just a cute little photo of one of our university groups um, ready to start the online LSVT loud training. A few pointers that might be helpful to you. Um, there, are, there is a pre-assessment and a final exam that are integrated into the online course. Those should be completed individually um, and not as a group because um, each person should answer that on their own. But there are quiz questions or knowledge review questions at the end of each of the modules, and those can be completed together as a group and discussed together. Um, the, one of the benefits of this group learning format is it assures that all the students complete the training in a timely manner, so there's no stragglers, and then also the physical performance of the exercises can be monitored by the faculty facilitator. Um, if uh, you choose to, you can still have an additional lab time at the end, but it's not uh, required. I know that there have been some universities that have chosen to do that, and in some instances even bring in, brought in persons with Parkinson's from the community um, to allow for some real world hands-on practice. So with that, I'm just really happy to welcome Dr. Kimberly Willis to our webinar today. She's an associate professor in the physical therapy department at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. And Dr. Willis has offered the LSVT Big online training to her students at least twice now, I think. And um, Dr. Willis, you can correct me if you're uh, if I'm wrong about that. Uh, but if no, you're questions. correct. Okay, yeah. A few questions for you, um, and some of these might be similar to what Jen answered. But what led you to first offer this training to your students? So before I. Uh transitioned into uh, into the academic side of physical therapy. I was in the clinic and, and had taken it, the LSVT big training course, uh, certification course, while in the clinic. And so I had been in the clinic, seen the, uh, the changes that I could make with my patients. And so uh, I ended up, I brought it back once I transitioned to the school here. Uh, I, I give a 
a brief two-hour lecture just about it. Uh, it actually occurs in their uh, second year of school and, and then uh, offer it to them, just throw it out there to them that if anyone is interested in becoming certified that I would be willing to be a facilitator for them and out of the last three years that I've presented, then two of the groups have asked that I facilitate for some of the students. Uh, so it's just, I've seen it in clinic, I've seen how great, what great improvements patients may have with this, and so I've wanted to bring it back to the students to let them know, here's another addition to your toolbox that you uh, could, could actually have while you're in clinic, so. Okay, that's great. So you've used a group learning model where you've done the course together with the students. And can you tell us a little bit about how that worked for you? Yes. So um, I offered it to the students and, and actually asked one of the students to take the lead on, on setting up what students wanted to participate in that, you know, just to have a list of names and email addresses for those students that were interested. and then. Um, still gave them the option to do online, that it was not required that they come in and do the group learning, but the vast majority of those students that, that, have, that have participated in it here have uh, actually selected the group learning uh, uh, section, so. Okay, great, great. So um, we all know that students and faculty are both extraordinarily busy uh, when that semester starts. Can you speak to how easy or, or challenging it was for you to organize and lead the course as a faculty? Oh, okay, yes, definitely. Uh, it's It was really easy for me to organize the course. Like I said, put one of the students in charge of getting the names and the email addresses of those interested in, in completing the course, and then, uh, and then just passed it on to LSVT uh, big and, and to, all of you took care of it from then on, uh, of making sure that the students had registered and those, uh, all of that handout, all of the handouts, the packets, everything was then shipped directly to me. Um, it is a little time consuming from my standpoint, but you know, I was happy to do it because of the students were so interested in, in learning about LSVT Big, and so I was really excited to to bring this to them on more than just that little, small little two-hour snapshot of what it is, but to actually help train them to become that certified uh, clinician, that certified, uh, been able to, pres to complete this in the clinics. That's great. And last question I have for you, and this kind of um, stems from that last question is, um, you've observed your, your students over the last couple of years, and how do you feel it's benefited your program and your students? Oh, uh, yes, I know that uh, I've had students email me while they're out in clinic and that they've been able to see LSVT big in action. They've been able to participate in it. Um, I've had several of the students students, as Sonia had mentioned, that she completed an in-service in it. What I think that it's done for us here is that it's actually helped educate our clinicians so that mm -hmm. there have been those students that have gone out and, and told their CIs, oh, I'm actually certified in LSVT big. And as a result of that, those CIs, those therapists in the clinic are actually wanting more information about it. And so then they're able to educate other clinicians about uh, this treatment protocol. That is a such a great um, tip that you bring up. And as a clinical instructor myself, I can vouch for that. That you know, I think that we learn just as much from our students at times as as we teach them. Um, and they always seem to bring new ideas to the clinic, new techniques. Um, and just refresh clinicians on the importance for evidence-based practice as well. So thank you for, for sharing your insights today. Yeah, thank you. Okay. All right, so our third option is to do a mix of that. So what that means, it would be doing part of the course as a group and then part of it individually. Um, and typically, the way that our course is structured is that the first um, 
up to 10 mo modules are background development, somewhat the didactic information. And then the middle set of modules is really where it comes to time for exercise and physical practice. And then the last set of modules is again, um, more information that can be completed on their own. And so sometimes when universities really have only a limited time when they can meet as a group, but still desire to do that hands-on practice with each other, this mixed learning model can work really well. Um, the students do have to be responsible to stay on pace so that, uh, for example, if they have to get through module 10 by the time the group learning day arrives, that they're all prepared um, and can start together. Again, with this, the faculty member does not need to be previously certified. They can, um, but they can learn right along with the students as well. And just like the other learning models, some universities elect to have an extra lab time at the end um, with or without Parkinson's volunteers um, in, from the community as well. So the last interview that we're going to have today is related to this mixed module, and I'd like to welcome Dr. Nancy Klein, who is an occupational therapist and assistant professor in the Department of OT at SUNY Downstate Medical Center in Brooklyn, New York. So welcome, Dr. Klein. Hello, and glad to be here. Thank you. And you have offered also the online training to your students over the last um, two or three years, I believe. And same question for you. What led you to initially offer the LSVT Big Training to your OT students? Well, shortly before I had taken the um, course myself, and I did it as a in full in-person weekend two-day course, and then put it into practice and so it's benefits like that it was evidence-based um, and from a student's perspective the other piece of having it structured as far as how to administer that it starts you know with the daily exercises and then it sort of walks them through what to do next which gives them the structure of how to set up a good solid treatment session so i was intrigued to try it um online with my students and see how it went. So the semester before is when I teach their neuro rehab course. And in that course, I when I teach about Parkinson's, I introduce them to LSVT Big as well as show them some of the clips from the Homework Helper DVD. And many of the students were quite interested in doing it. And that was really the trigger to you know, investigate the online course and a way to work with the students and with you to be able to provide it to them. Okay, great, great. And you used, at least one year, you used some of, of this mixed learning model. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how you organized that? Sure. So after taking it myself in person and being very much a clinician, I really was struggling with how students who had no clinical background um, and experience with patients were going to be able to learn the movement since it's truly a movement-based therapy. Mm -hmm. um, so the possibility that mixed model, you know, we had discussed and it worked out very well where the students had done up to, um, modules one through 12 prior to our meeting time. And then the middle modules, as you had stated, like 13 through 25, which was where they were learning the actual exercises themselves is what we did together. And we did it um, mixing up right there and then that we would go through the module online and then we would practice the exercises together. So we, it was, you know, sit, learn, stand up, practice, sit, learn, stand up, practice. Mm -hmm. And I was able to walk around and correct things like their hand positions, their leg positions, mm -hmm. um, that big emphasis to really help them realize, like, don't feel funny, you know, big emphasis, count out loud and really put the effort forward um, is what I really liked about the mixed module. And then they completed the remaining modules on their own. And then we came back. Um, for them to have time to work with actual um, patients of mine who had Parkinson's disease and try doing those exercises with them and 
you know, how to shape with them, how to model. You know, that is really a valuable opportunity for the students to actually get some hands-on practice with people who have Parkinson's disease. Um, could you see that benefit for them directly after they had practiced on each other and now on people with PD? Very much so. You know, where they all felt it was kind of easy to do first themselves and then to pair up with classmates. And it was very different for them to do, especially as we've all had. Some patients right. at the early stages are, you know, more mobile and a bit easier. And as the disease progresses, it's a lot harder to work with them, model, shape, get the positions you want. And so it was a good opportunity to walk them through that. Great. And do you feel that this helped in preparing them for their field work or taking their first positions in um, neuro-related jobs? Very much so. I was lucky. Sonia was my student in our first group that we did. And right away from field work, she called me and was very excited, you know, to present both an in-service to the staff there that she worked up and then sent through me and was referred patients, you know, right after she left and became, you know, a full therapist. So I could see it. And in the New York area, there are a lot of occupational therapy programs. So there are a lot of new clinicians on the market. And this mm -hmm. definitely helps them. That's fantastic. And, and last question for you, Dr. Klein, do you have any pearls of wisdom for other faculty who are listening today who might be considering um, bringing the online course to their university or maybe even utilizing this mixed model? Um, you know what? Through the years, I've now done it three times with you. And the first time I did it much like someone said, I, you know, spoke, the students said they were interested and I sort of had, okay, email me and we'll put together a list. Through the years, you L at LSVT um, Loud and Big, you've put together a variety of forms now where I can keep track of the students who sign up and their emails and things. So you actually have made it much easier from a faculty standpoint. Good. Um, the only other thing I would say is we do it in February because that's where I can get a weekend that works well for both me and the students. And you have to be a little bit flexible out east with the snow because one year we did have to move it around. Yes. Okay, well, that is so uh, wonderful. Thank you for all your insights. And I just think it's really neat to hear the comparison um, and the tips from the three of you. So thank you. You're welcome. So some next steps for you. Um, if you're interested in offering this at your university, one of the first things to do is think about when you want to start offering the training and then what type of learning model will be used. And hopefully explaining these learning models was helpful to you. Um, remember that there are handouts that are downloaded or we can email this to you as well that walk you through those different learning models. Um, and then third, just inform your students of the opportunities and start collecting names and emails of interested students. Return that information to LSVT Global and we really do try to take care of the rest for you. So we'll send customized registration instructions to everyone that you've um, indicated on your sign-up sheet that might be interested in taking the course. After that registration deadline passes, we'll ship the course materials to your site, or we can ship the course materials to each individual student or clinician as well. Um, we'll provide some preparatory instruction to the course facilitator so that you know exactly um, what to do and what your role is, how to prepare, be prepared, prepared for any um, technical questions. And then during the course, just as in a live course, the faculty is here for you. Um, so we're not there live, but we can be um, accessed via email or telephone um, during or after the course if you have any questions. And then we also are on deck for any tech support issues that might arise. So we want to leave you with a, a couple of things. One, just a quote, and this is from a student who took the LSVT loud training, and she said, so glad to have this online option as travel to workshops is impossible at this time. Also, thank you for offering discount courses to graduate students. 
As a new clinician, internalizing these principles is invaluable not just for LSVT, but any treatment approach for any population. And these video models are worth a thousand textbooks. Um, and so that's really the message that we want to share with students and faculty is that this is feasible and it's extremely valuable for you as a student and as you begin your careers as well. So in summary, we discussed the growing incidence of Parkinson's disease, which really has created an ongoing need, an increasing need um, to train large numbers of therapists to become experts to work pe with people with Parkinson's disease. We've talked about the advantages of providing the LSVT training and certification at the student level um, and the benefits that go beyond the two-day course it's, itself. We've described the different models for learning, both live and online, and we've heard some really valuable pearls of wisdom from our faculty and student guest panelists today. So there are some learning opportunities that we want to inform you of. We just launched a new website a couple of weeks ago, and we have a student and faculty section that's loaded with information, links to our research, um, our research grants, and et cetera. We have webinars that are available both on demand and live, and we've um, put the, the link to how to access these here. If you're a certified clinician, you'll find them in your clinician account, and the public webinars, if you're not certified, can be accessed through our blog. And then anytime you have any questions, just email our experts at info at lsvtglobal.com, and we'll make sure that your question gets sent to the right person. Um, so if you are a certified clinician, please be sure to log in to your LSVT Global Clinician account. You'll have to reset your password. If you have any questions on how to do that, email us, but we hope that you love the new features that you'll find in your new clinician account. Our next public webinar is on atypical and advanced Parkinsonian disorders, um, an application to LSVT Loud that's coming up on August 22nd. And we've just listed our upcoming live courses, both for LSVT Loud and LSVT Big here. And so for the last few minutes before our webinar ends, we are going to take some questions. If you um, don't have time and you need to hop off, that's just fine because um, we're near the top of the hour, but we will stay on for at least five minutes and answer any questions that have come in. Okay, so um, here's one question. As a clinician, I see as many four, as four patients a day that have Parkinson's disease. I teach LSVT regularly. If I have a student, do they have to be LSVT certified in order for them to treat these patients, or can I teach them the program as long as I'm co-signing a note? Um, so thank you for answering, asking that great question, which we didn't address during today's webinar. And the answer to that is that, yes, if they are going to be participating in the delivery of LSVT Loud or LSVT Big as a student um, or as a professional, they have to be certified. Um, if they're not certified, they can observe you, uh, but you can't teach the student yourself how to deliver the LSVT treatments. Um, the good news is, is that if you do have a student and they're really interested in um, delivering LSVT big, getting certified or LSVT loud, um, and you have a high caseload of people with Parkinson's, you they can get trained online in as little as two days. So, um, you know, even in the middle of their externship or their field work, they could take the training literally over the weekend and start helping to treat patients come Monday. Um, okay. Then, Laura, I, yeah. I just wanted to add to that. Likewise, if there's students on who are wondering, well, if I get certified, can I then provide the treatment? If you go through the certification as a student, you can provide the treatment, but your supervisor, either in your externship or clinically, the faculty do need to be also certified um, in the respective discipline. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Angela. Um, this question says, is there a limit to the number of students who can sign up for a group online course? Um, the easy answer is no, <laughs> there's no limit. If, you, if the students do the learning individually, of course, as many students 
Um, there's, there's no limit to that. If you're going to be offering it in a classroom environment, um, your only limit will be the space that you have to practice exercises if you are doing an LSBT big online training. Um, and because the university is already accustomed to accommodating that class size, that should really be no problem if the entire class wanted to take the, the group online course. Um, Angela, any other feedback you want to add to that one? No, I think that's great. Okay. Um, this therapist says, can you elaborate on the cost? And yes, it is in the slides just for your reference. Um, and we can email those to you. It's also in the handouts. The student pricing is $300, or if there's five or more, it's $275. Um, if a faculty is leading a, a group, if there are 10 or more students, they can also get that student rate if they're not already certified. Um, if they are already certified and are facilitating a group learning, that faculty can take the course again at, at no additional cost. Um, so again, if you have any questions on that, just email us and we can um, give you a copy of the handout. Um, okay, there's a question, Angela, on what were the outcome measures for LSVT and the psychometrics? So um, on the, I assume you're referring back to the slide that we had at the beginning um, that talked about some of the outcome measures. Um, so one of the main outcome measures that we always look at because we're working on increasing sound pressure, loudness is sound pressure level. So pre to post changes in that. And I'd be happy to send you detailed references on any of these after if you just wanna leave some contact information. Um, so I can give you more details on all those references that we've listed. But um, so we look at those changes in sound pressure level. And then also we've looked at changes in semitone standard deviation to so show changes in um, vocal in the um, inflection of the voice following treatment. We also look at beyond acoustic measures. Um, we've done respiratory. Um, some of the other measures are respiratory kinematics. Um, and then beyond that, we look perceptually at listener perception, also perception of the people with Parkinson's disease, caregivers perception. So we really try to cover the whole range of quantifiable acoustic data to qualitative perceptual as well. So if you want to leave your contact, I'll be happy to give you all sorts of details on all the, um, the different things that we've looked at in those different studies. Okay, thank you. And if you are asking about LSVT big outcome measures, um, yes, please just write your name down on the survey at the end of the webinar and we can contact you as there is a range of outcome measures that we use um, depending on if you're a physical therapist or an occupational therapist for LSVT big. Okay, a couple more questions. Um, to clarify, if a student is LSVT trained, can they use this in treatment during their internship under a clinical instructor or educator who is not LSVT certified? Um, yes, yeah, so to clarify, both of them have to be LSVT certified, both the student and the clinical instructor or educator um, who is delivering the, the treatment. So both of them have to be LSVT certified. Okay, and I believe this is our last question for today's webinar. Can licensed physical therapists join a group class that is offered at a university if they are not faculty? Um, great question, and yes, we have done that in the past. So if there's a total of five or more registering together, they would get the professional group rate of $530 um, as a professional. And that can work really nicely for them to join in either individually or in the group learning format. So great question. Okay, well with that, I believe that we're out of time. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's webinar. We sure did and uh, we hope that it was valuable information for you. Again, if you think of additional questions or you're interested in moving forward and offering this at your university, simply email us at info at lsvtglobal.com and either Angela or I will walk you through that process, discuss the options and uh, get you started. 
So thank you and thank you again to our panelists um, who joined our webinar today.